bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. To Dr. James Costin, the president of Interdenominational Theological Center, to the chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Bishop Roy English, to the faculty, to the Board of Trustees, to the graduates and family members of the graduates of the 37th Commencement Exercises. I thank you for this signal honor and this opportunity to be able to stand and say a word of encouragement to you on your graduation day. The very last verse in the fourth chapter of Colossians verse 18. The New Revised Standard Version says, Remember my chains. Today's English Version translates the verse, Do not forget my chains. May God's grace be with you. Would you repeat those words after me? Do not forget my chains. Do not forget my chains. May God's grace be with you. Like 
how much water was you? And which baptismal formula was repeated? Physical condition. Redoing what God had already done. And then the New Age teachers in Paul's day, they said that there were strict rules about what food you could or could not eat. And they had other matters that guaranteed you full salvation, like what day of the week you kept as holy, what tongue you used to praise God or praise these other powers who energized you and actualized you and mighty-sized you. A bunch of folk who came in with a whole new set of hoops to jump through if you wanted real salvation, full salvation. If you really wanted to be saved, if you wanted the, the full gospel, watch out. If you, want, if you wanted the, the black man's true religion. And I always find it fascinating that these agents never go into the crack houses to save them.
chains that were switched once they were on board the stinking slave ship so that they could now be bound foot to hand and hand to foot, sardine style, in a space not big enough to stand up in. Chains that kept them sealed together while they ate, while they slept, while they got seasick and lost their food all over each other. Chains that welded them together while they urinated and defecated in a cramped place with no window so that they could not tell whether it was night or day. Chain that froze them to the reality of hatred and hopelessness and the one next to them and sometimes on both sides of them would die and they could do nothing but lie there in the stench of death and call out for help in a tongue the traitors could not understand. Scream in the dark for some help from the one who was determined to hurt them. As the curator held up those chains, he looked through that door of no return. That's what they called that hole in the side of the fort's wall through which the Africans had to walk chained on a plank out to the ship. Once through that door, they would never return to their homeland, never return to their loved ones, never return to their families, never return to their friends. The curator looked at the door as he held up the chains, and then he looked at us, 425 African Americans, 390 of whom had never been to Africa before. And he said with a smile, I guess we will have to change the name of that door now, because you, our African sisters and brothers from across the ocean, you have returned home. to lead us in prayer. In his prayer, he asked the African mother who was separated from her child, what was it like? What was it like to hear your baby scream in the next room and you couldn't do anything about it? What was it like? What was it like, my African brother, to see your woman, your wife, your daughter, called and ravaged by Portuguese, Dutch, English, French, and Spanish sellers of flesh. What was it like? Did you go crazy all at once? Did your grasp on sanity snap suddenly? Or did you feel yourself slowly losing all sight on reality? Where you just did not care anymore about anything, whether you lived or whether you died? What was it like? To be among the walking dead with your family gone, your child slaughtered, your baby gang raped to death. What was it like to hear a language you could not understand, to see a captor who killed and ravaged wantonly, to feel a hatred that is still inexplicable? What was it like, black man? What was it like, black woman? What was it like, grandma, grandpa, what dear? To not be able to bury your own dead, to not be able to mourn or to grieve. What was it like as Fontroy prayed and the waves of the Atlantic beat against the treacherous rocks at the base of that fort's wall? I could hear grown men in our group weeping. I could hear the moans of the black church as others joined in communally to help him pray. But above the cries, above the moans, above the waves and above the prayer, I could hear something else. Maybe it was the clanking and the clinking of the shackle in the curator's hand. Or maybe it was the blowing of the Holy Ghost upon my spirit. Yes, but I could hear the Africans who passed through that place saying to us, do not forget my chance. Do not forget my chains in your middle class modernity. Far removed from the nightmare of that reality, do not forget my chains.
I go to my seat. If I can just jumpstart your spiritual pathway. 